On November the 12th, 1934, Charles Manson was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, to 16-year-old mother Kathleen Maddox. Upon birth, he didn't actually have a name, but after a few weeks, he was called Charles Mills Maddox. For a while, the identity of Charles' biological father was a mystery, but it's believed to have been Colonel Walker Henderson Scott. Kathleen actually filed a paternal suit against him, which was met and resolved in 1937. But it's likely that Charles never actually got to meet his biological father, or even knew who he really was. He was known as a con artist and worked in local mills, but he managed to convince Kathleen that he was actually an army colonel, using his real birth name of colonel to complete the illusion. Once she informed him that she was pregnant, he claimed to have been called away on army business, and she would never hear from him again. In August 1934, three months before Charles was born, Kathleen, at the age of 16, married a man by the name of William Eugene Manson, who was a dry cleaning labourer. After she gave birth, she would often leave her child with several babysitters while she went out drinking with her brother. This marriage lasted three years, being divorced on April the 30th, 1937, after Kathleen claimed William showed gross neglect of duty, but the details are unknown. Despite this, her son did keep his stepfather's name as Charles Manson. Allegedly, during his childhood, his mother once took him to a bar where she sparked up a conversation with a waitress who desperately wanted to have children. She found Charles adorable, and his mother claimed if she gave her a pitcher of beer, she could have him. The waitress, probably assuming it was a joke, got her the beer, but as soon as Kathleen finished her drink, she left the bar and her child behind. Upon discovering what happened, Charles' uncle had to hunt the waitress down a few days later to get his nephew back. If you could describe your childhood in a couple of sentences, how would you describe it? I didn't have a childhood. As a child, money was scarce. So much so, Manson only got given a hairbrush as a toy one Christmas. He witnessed his classmates being showered with presents and this angered him as he felt like them celebrating was just to ridicule him. As a result, Manson would steal a bunch of their toys and set them all on fire. On August the 1st, 1939, Charles was five years old when his mother and her brother were arrested for assault and robbery, being given five and ten years in prison respectively. Charles was then put into the care of an aunt and uncle in West Virginia. In 1942, Kathleen was paroled and Charles, who was now eight, for the first time in his life actually received a hug from his mother upon returning home. He called this the happiest time in his entire life. How were you in school? I hear that you weren't too good, but maybe I heard Uh Depends on which school. I did very well in reform school. Yeah. <laughs> I did good in, uh, in uh, every place that uh, I was ever told to do good in. I've been an outlaw ever since I was born. I went to reform school when I was about 10, and I learned to box and cry, and I learned to do all the things that you do in reform school. Then I went to, uh, I escaped there a bunch of times and I went to prison and I learned everything that you do in prison. And I talked to all the guys and asked them everything they knew. And they told me all the things they knew. And then I went to the end of it and then the old man would be ready to die and he'd say, well, son, uh, sincerity is the best gimmick, remember that. And I said, all right, be sincere, that's, that'll win it. He said, that's it. Sincerity and honesty, he said, it'll do it. It'll trick them every time. <laughs> I said, well, sincere and honesty, I never tried that. <laughs> Him and his mother then moved to West Virginia, but Kathleen continued to spend her evenings drinking alcohol while her son constantly played truant at school. Not long after, she was again arrested for theft, but not convicted. They soon moved once more, but this time to Indianapolis, where Kathleen met an alcoholic by the name of Lewis at an AA meeting, and they would marry in August of 1943. That same year, Charles was just nine years old, and he claims he actually set his school on fire, though there's no records of this actually taking place. 
Not only did he often fail to show up to school, but he did start stealing at a young age. But by the time he hit 13, he was placed in a boys' school for male delinquents, ran by Catholic priests. It was a rather strict environment where even the slightest misbehavior would result in beatings with a wooden paddle or a leather strap. This led to Manson often running away to sleep in the woods, under bridges, or just anywhere that he considered safe. He even ran away completely once, returning to his mother, but she opened the door to see him standing there, and she simply said that she couldn't handle him anymore, before closing the door in his face. Charles would spend Christmas in 1947 with his aunt and uncle. He would be returned to the school, but not long after, he ran away again to Indianapolis. Whilst there in 1948, Charles was 15 and he robbed a grocery store. It began with him trying to find something to eat, but then he found a cigar box containing $100 and he took it, using the money to rent a room and to buy some food. He did try to sort himself out by getting a job, but then he continued stealing and was even caught. But the judge showed mercy towards the young boy, instead sending him to a juvenile facility in Omaha, Nebraska. However, after just four days, he and a fellow student, Blackie Nielsen, gained a gun and stole a car. On their way home to Nielsen's uncle's house, they committed two armed robberies. However, Nielsen's uncle was also a thief, so upon return, he became their mentor and he commended their actions. Two weeks later and Manson was arrested during a raid of a convenience store and was then sent to a strict reform school. Allegedly, during his time here, Charles Manson was raped by other students, while a staff member even watched and encouraged the behavior. Manson would run away from this school 18 times. Tell me how you would describe how bad it was for you in these reform schools. A child don't know what bad is. Well, he says in the book that you were raped, that you were beaten oh, constantly. Come on, man. That's not true. That's what he would like to believe. But so, there ain't, no, ain't nobody can do that. So you're saying that that didn't happen? No. So no. you didn't have a lousy childhood then? Yeah, I had a terrible childhood. But I'm from here. In other words, it didn't get uh, to no, you? No, I've never sold out. They've never beat me. I haven't been beaten. Tell me about your terrible childhood. The child doesn't know what terrible is. You don't want to talk about it, I think. I'm telling you, a child doesn't know what terrible is. Give me what a little is terrible, of, Give me a little description of it. What is terrible? You know, terrible. What does that mean, terrible? I don't know. You you use the word, so I'm trying to get no, him to no, describe it. No, no, I didn't. He name. used the word in his book. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I'm not a sniveler. I don't cry. I don't snivel. I don't look for excuses to get off on other things. While he was there, he actually came up with a technique in order to defend himself. If he was being attacked, he would screech at a high-pitched level, grimace, and wave his arms around frantically to give off the illusion that he was completely insane. Is Charlie Manson crazy? Well, whatever that means, sure, he's crazy as mad as a hatter. What difference does it make? You know, a long time ago, being crazy meant something. Nowadays, everybody's crazy. So, I mean, you know, like, you know, synonymous. I mean, it's an irony, man. It's a paradox. I mean, are you crazy? Dressed in black? You think I don't know everything that goes with that black you're dressed in? <laughs> yeah. Where's your black gloves? You got your rings. You think I don't understand your blue rings and your yellow best skin? You think you're anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then behind that, then, you know, there's a room. He tried to escape several times before finally succeeding in February of 1951. It didn't take long, however, for him to be caught robbing gas stations and stealing cars in Utah. Manson was then sent to Washington, D.C.'s National Training School for Boys. He was tested academically and he was found to have been completely illiterate. But he did have an above-average IQ, though he was also found to have been aggressively antisocial. I don't fit in society and I am incompetent. I'm definitely incompetent. No, that's not what I, I would say. Well, I, no, I say that. I say that. No, there's nothing wrong with being incompetent because you don't have to do as much. Uh, <laughs> if you're competent, then you got a lot to do. See? I know I don't know. I know I'm stupid. I admit I'm a pity, whatever. I've never been a success at anything. I even got to the point where I didn't want to be a success at anything. What would 
being a success, what does that mean, you know? Money? Oh, I've had all the money in the world three times and I had to give it back. That's a stupid little game, you know? My awareness and my consciousness is not the same as somebody that goes to school and has a mom and dad. See, not having parents have left me in a, another dimension, so to say. In October of 1951, Charles was just about to turn 17 years old, and a psychiatrist had him transferred to a minimum security institution. His aunt would visit him frequently and offered to let him stay at her house, and she would even help him find work. He had a parole hearing scheduled for February 1952, but a month beforehand, he was caught raping a boy at knife point. This led to Manson being transferred to the Federal Reformatory in Petersburg, Virginia, though this didn't stop him, as he was caught committing another eight serious disciplinary offences, three of which involved homosexual acts, though the exact details are unclear. Do you miss women? Certainly. My goodness, yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of women? Oh, I like them. Yeah, they're nice. They're put together well and everything, and they're soft and spongy. Yeah, they're nice. As long as they keep their mouth shut and do what they're supposed to do. Why do you say that? Because that's what a woman's supposed to do. Keep her mouth shut and do what she's supposed to do? Sure. I come out of the bank, so someone's got to be killed. Somebody told somebody some lies, and somebody's going to kill somebody. So I come out of the bank, we push in the broom, and they got this guy in the butcher shop, and they're stabbing him to death. I'm walking a line. I'm not a snitch. I don't run and tell the cops tales. I stand on my own two feet. So one of them looks over and says, Manson, get on the point. So I take the broom and I get on the point. And I'm watching and I'm thinking, that tramp better not move for me. If he moves to me, I'm going to take him home to his mama, you dig? So he doesn't move to me and I don't move to him. So they got this guy and they stabbed him to death. And you can't kill anyone in the kitchen in a penitentiary because it makes it bad for the food, it's bad for everyone. It creates a lot of paranoia. So they're cutting this guy in half and they're trying to put him in the garbage can. They can't get him in the garbage can. So they cut him in half and bent him and they got the elevator and they're smashing the elevator down trying to put him in the can. He's got half in one can and half in the other can and they're trying to smuggle him out of the kitchen. And they smuggle him out of the kitchen and I'm pushing the floor. The guy come up and says, what happened? What happened where? He said, what did you see? I said, see what? Where? What are you talking about? I don't see nothing, man. All my life, I've been on that line. I don't, I don't ever see anything. At this point, Charles was sent to a maximum security reformatory at Chillicothe, Ohio, with him not being allowed release until his 21st birthday in November 1955. However, he was released early in May 54 due to good behavior and lived with his aunt and uncle. In January the next year, he actually married a hospital waitress by the name of Rosalie Willis, and she soon fell pregnant. They moved to Los Angeles together using a car he had stolen in Ohio and was again charged in October for taking a stolen vehicle across state lines. He was given a psychiatric evaluation and given five years probation though he failed to show up to the hearing, leading to yet another arrest in March 1956. His probation was revoked and he was sentenced to three years in prison. Tell me in a sentence who you are. Nobody. I'm nobody. I'm a tramp, a bum, a hobo. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. And a straight razor if you get too close to me. During his time inside, Rosalie gave birth to their son, Charles Manson Jr. Manson's mother moved in with Rosalie while he was in prison, though they would both visit him often. Though in March 1957, Rosalie stopped coming to see him. Charles' mother informed him that his wife was now living with another man. He was just two weeks away from possibly receiving parole, but he refused to wait and tried to escape and steal a car, but was caught and his parole was denied, being given five years probation instead. And besides the son that you had in your marriage, you've got, what, four other children somewhere? I don't uh, uh, think I've been uh, uh, 
uh, responsible for as much as you people want to lay on me. All right, somewhere out there, somewhere, there's at least one son that we know of that's your child, who's probably about 25 or 26 years old. You talk to that kid. What are you going to say to him? You got to catch it on your own, boy. Train's hard. The road's rough. In September 1958, Manson did finally receive five years parole, and this was around the same time Rosalie filed for divorce. By November, Charles began pimping out a 16-year-old girl, and another girl was also helping him financially as she had wealthy parents. In September 1959, he was charged with trying to cash in a forged check, and he pled guilty, claiming that he stole it from a mailbox, but these charges were soon dropped. He did receive a 10-year suspended sentence and probation, but this was only because a young woman called Leona, who had a history of prostitution charges, cried in court and claimed that she was deeply in love with Charles Manson and would marry him if he was let out. By the end of the year, they did actually marry, though it's believed she only did this so she wouldn't have to testify against him. Manson did take her and another woman to New Mexico for further prostitution, leading to him being caught and questioned again. He was let go, but knew the investigation would continue, so he disappeared, which completely violated his probation. One of the women was found and arrested for prostitution, and Charles was located and also arrested in June. He was now forced to serve his 10-year jail sentence for violating his probation. The mind is endless. He put me in a dark, solitary cell, and to you, that's the end. To me, <laughs> it's the beginning. It's the universe in there. There's a world in there. I'm free. He spent an entire year trying to appeal the decision, but failed. In July 1961, now 26 years old, Manson was transferred to the United States Penitentiary at McNeil Island in Washington. He began learning to play the guitar and even gained contacts from Universal Studios in Hollywood, specifically Phil Kaufman. Manson's mother even moved nearby, working as a waitress so she could be close to her son during this time. During his time in Sion, Manson began studying Scientology and even listed it as his religion. It's believed that during his study, he seemed to learn a lot of insight to his own personal issues. Manson would continue to meet other Scientologists and preach the religion for most of his life. Well, God, I guess you're my best friend, being I invented you. You believe in God, Charles? Sure, I believe in myself. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Which one? Are you Jesus Christ? Which, which Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesus. There's a black Jesus down in Florida. He's having a good time. There's a Mexican Jesus in Mexico. I mean, there's all kinds of Jewish Jesus. I mean, Jesus, you know. It's all kinds of Jesus coming back everywhere. And nothing can stop it. It's a consciousness that lives in your mind. You know, da, 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 you know. Over the years in prison, it was noted that Manson had a tremendous drive to call attention to himself. But in 1963, Manson now 29 years old, Leona filed for divorce. While all of this was going on, she claimed they had a son together called Charles Luther Manson. There was also a bizarre rumor for a while that during this time, Manson actually auditioned to be in the band The Monkees. But this was proven to have been false as he was still in prison when this supposedly took place. In June 1966, Manson was preparing for an early release due for March the 21st, 1967. He had spent more than half of his life in prison or other institutions. And because of this, he actually asked to stay locked up as it was more of his home than the outside world. All my life I've been in jail because I didn't have no one to get me out of jail. I didn't have no brother outside. So I spent years and years and years and years just because Nobody would come and sign their name and get me out of jail. And the jail couldn't let me out because I didn't have no place to go. So I spent 22 years in prison because I didn't have nobody outside. I can't let somebody that's with me stay in jail. It, it just ain't, you know, it's not in my makeup, man. I got to get my brother out of jail. So you needed money to do uh, that. Well, that's, that's the, here's, the, here's the division between your mind and my mind. Here's where the chamber opens up. When you get in trouble, you go to your mother. You call up mother. I ain't got no mother to call. Well, you go to the bank, draw some money, and pay a lawyer. I ain't got no money. I can't go to no lawyer. You use the word maniacs on the outside. How are you different from the maniacs on the outside? And why do you call them maniacs? Because you know something, they think you are one. Yeah, it would reflect 
if you hold the negative up to the light, you don't see the light, you just see the negative. So I'm a reflection of your negative, there's no doubt about that, and I can handle that also. I've been handling, ain't I? I don't know, have you? Well, I've been up and down these damn hallways, in and out of these nut wards for the last 10 years. You think you could follow that act? I'm playing for my life. You're working for money. <laughs> Regardless, Charles Manson was released in 1967, which is when he began gaining a group of followers, mostly young women, in California, and they would later be dubbed the Manson family. I had no followers. You said you were the energy of no, the place. I was the energy of the place only because I was there. I didn't even realize I was the energy of the place. You know, I didn't know everybody out there was dead. I really didn't, you know. I, I really honestly didn't know that everybody was running on what someone else said. You know, they said, uh, they said the kids come up and they said, what can we do? I said, do whatever you want to do. They said, you can't tell the children to do whatever they want to do. How did you learn what they've done? Uh, but over the period of years, I, you know, I've figured it all out. I've, I've went through my mind to figure out how things happen, you know. But how did you learn what had happened those two nights, the next day and then the day. Oh no, it took, it took years, man. I've been going through a lot of changes in here. I was on cell 13 and death row, walking back and forth, saying, how did I end up here? The main members would consist of musician and former actor Charles Tex Watson, former musician and pornographic actor Robert Boussoulet, librarian Mary Brunner, Susan Atkins, Linda Kasabian, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Leslie Van Houten. The group turned into a doomsday cult as Charles was obsessed with the idea of an imminent apocalyptic race war between the black population in the United States and the white. Manson was a white supremacist who believed that black people would rise up and eliminate all whites except for them, but felt like black people wouldn't be intelligent enough to survive on their own and would need a white man to lead them. He wanted them to serve him as their master. A lot of people say you're a racist, is that true? Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm a racist. There we are. Aren't you? Tell me. Who are you for? You for yourself? You're a racist? I you're a racist? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, uh, Larry, what is a racist, guy? You don't even know what it is. It's not in the dictionary. It's not even an English word, man. It's a game that you play on a street corner. In 1968, Manson began using the term Helter Skelter, coined from the Beatles song, referring to this upcoming war he wanted. And that's about the extent of it. All this all cult, all that hocus pocus stuff that you guys are playing, I don't know nothing about all you that. You know nothing about something called Helter Skelter. Tell me, Charles, I don't know. It's a fairy tale. It's worse than a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. It's a, it's, it's a comedy. It's a comedy tragedy. My cousin and I used to go horseback riding at the Spawn Ranch, which is in, a, a, yeah, it's a community northwest of Los Angeles. And we would go up there horseback riding. And the last time I did, I was about 12. It was 1968 or late 68, I think, fall. And uh, we were renting our horses and some guy came in and started screaming, Charlie's on the hill, Charlie's on the hill. And we, it startled us. We're like, oh, my, well, what happened? And the old guy who was renting his horse said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And he, everybody, there, maybe eight to ten people, men and women, jumped on horses and galloped away. And we were, wow, what was that? Well, the old guy brings out two horses that, you know, Central Park horses that are gunk, 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 gunk. And we start to do our horseback ride uh, in the same direction where they went. About 20 minutes later, we see a, a trail of horses coming back. And the the, the width of this trail is maybe 10 feet. So horses have to pass by each other very closely. And in the middle of this pack, there was one little man with black hair and dark dead eyes who was on the horse, but he wasn't holding his own reins. The, the guy in front of him was on. And he was just sitting kind of wildly like this, just like going with the movement of the horse. And he was just out of his mind. And my cousin and I are passing and we're looking at him and like, oh my God. And I looked at him carefully as he was passing. And my cousin said, that must be Charlie. And then we didn't think a thing of it. The following year, we see all oh, the, the man, the Tate LaBianca murders and there had been arrest. And here's the picture of, and it was like, 
Oh, I, and that was, I get on the phone to my cousin and she's going, I, I was just about to call you. Oh my God, can you believe it? And it's like, that was Charlie Manson. And you're 13 years, 13 years I, I old was, at the time? I was 12 time? years 12 old. 12 years old at the time? Yeah. It's yeah. kind of hard to process that. It was almost like turning a switch. It was like, ooh, I'll never forget that face. And that's why I'm positive it was him. It was widely believed for a while that Charles Manson never actually murdered anyone himself. But that doesn't mean that he didn't give it a try. On May the 18th, 1969, Manson and the women were on Spahn Ranch to sing when Terry Melcher visited them. The group were well received, but come June, Manson was preparing his racially motivated war, beginning with black drug dealer Bernard Crow. A conflict between the Manson family and Crow began, leading to Charles shooting him and believing that he was dead. He dumped the body in Los Angeles, but to further add to the complications, the Black Panther Party were a political organization. Manson believed that Crow was part of their group and tried to murder him to initiate the war, but he wasn't. After this, Manson had to heighten security at Spahn Ranch to defend themselves. Manson would not find out that Crow was still alive until he later appeared in court to testify against him. I don't like to see any negative happen to anyone. I don't like to see uh, children die. I don't like to see automobile accidents. I don't like to see people hurting each other. I don't like none of that. I don't get a thrill out of that, you dig? But I'm not gonna sit here and tell you a bunch of malarkey. I'm not gonna fill you up with bunk. If I can't fill you up with right, I'm not gonna fill you up with nothing. So I'm filling you up with this. I tell you, and I tell you right up into the highest peak of your understanding, I did not break the law. It's that simple. You know, if I wanted to kill somebody, I'd take this book and beat you to death with it, and I wouldn't feel a thing. It'd be just like walking to the drugstore. Gary Allen Hinman was a music teacher who had befriended the Manson family, but he had a lot of stocks behind his name, leading to Manson sending his crew to his home on July the 25th, 1969. What do you think it is about you that makes people want to be a part of whatever it is you're a part of? I'm brand new. Everything I do is always brand new. I'm on the premise of reality. I walk a real, a, a real road. I'm a real person inside. I'm not a phony. I don't put on no airs. I say what I think. You see what I'm saying? Aren't and you I, putting on an air now? Aren't you I'm putting on, on an air well, for it, me? When you, when, you, when you look it back, see if it's an air. See if where you get it. And someone sees it and goes by and they say, hey, how you doing? I say, pretty good. How you doing? The group ended up holding Hinman hostage for two days while Manson showed up and slashed his ear with a sword. Beausoleil proceeded to stab Hinman to death at Manson's request. The team would then write the words, political piggy, on the wall in his blood, before drawing the Black Panther symbol. I live and die by my words. I've lived and died by my words all my life, for 45 years in prison. I keep my word. My word is my bond. I walk on my word. I live on my word. Do you want the world to let you alone and turn away? Listen, listen. I broke no law. Try to understand that. I broke no law. I didn't step out of line with God, and I didn't step out of line with the man. I did not break the law. On August the 6th, 1969, just 12 days later, Beausoleil was caught driving Hinman's car and was arrested with the murder weapon being found in the vehicle. It was at this point Manson decided it was time to begin Helter Skelter. I don't have enough money to go to the lawyer to get Bobby out. So everybody standing around I said, pay me, pay me what you owe me now. And they said, well, how do we do that? I said, get my brother out of jail. He said, how do we do it? I said, I don't know how you do it. I don't care how you do it. Do it now. Do it. And they said, how do we do it? I said, don't ask me how to do it. I don't want to be no part of no conspiracy. But however you do it, do it and get it done now. How do we do it? I don't know. I don't want to be involved in it. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. In Japan, they call it ninja. I don't get involved in violence. 
I'm not a violent human being. He wanted his followers to commit murders in Los Angeles and make them appear to be racially motivated. What did they war. think they were we doing? We are at war now. But what did they think they were doing for you? They weren't doing anything for me. What did they think they were doing for you? Okay, okay. If you were me and I am you, everything you do is for you, it's for me too. So what did they oh, think? If you're in one mind, if I am you and you are me and we are all together, and then who's responsible for calm together over me right now? Ba -da 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 -da. It's all his fault. On the night of August the 8th, 1969. Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Linda Kasabian, and Patricia Krenwinkel headed to the home of 26-year-old actress Sharon Tate. Why that house that night? Why they Which were house? There? Which night? The house on Cello Drive, the, the Tate house. Why did they go there that night? Uh, because Tex had been there before, and he went to a familiar place. And why did they kill people that night? What did they think uh, they because, were doing uh, for you? They freaked they out, were? man. They, uh, Tex was stoned. He would, you know, he got... Everybody was loaded, man. He said he was, and he said he was coming off an LASD tour. He had no speed. No speed. He... Well, not around me, he didn't have no speed, because I wouldn't allow no speed on that ranch. i kick ass over there. Manson had instructed them to completely destroy anyone in the property, and to make it as gruesome as possible. Inside the house was Sharon Tate, who was eight and a half months pregnant at the time. Her friend and former lover, Jay Sebring, screenwriter Wojcik Frakowski, and his girlfriend, Abigail Folger. Tate's husband, filmmaker Roman Polanski, was away in Europe on business at the time. Music producer Quincy Jones was also supposed to be there, but cancelled at the last minute. Steve McQueen was also invited that evening, but opted to stay away to spend the night with his girlfriend instead. Oh, no, no, it's his fault. No, we put another false face on it. It's Halloween. It's your fault. So, now, wait a minute. Criminal behavior is the same. It's mundane in most minds. Criminal will always go to a familiar place. Tex had been to that house. Tex went back to that house. The only way that you can dispensate life and death is you have to be willing to give yourself to that cause. You can't fight a revolution. You can't do anything unless you're willing to submit yourself to that cause. Take the right, left, face. In other words, that's what you learn in the military. Did you tell them to mutilate oh, so that it would be memorable, so that people would know it, something uh, was going boom, on? Batter, Lana. Did you tell them to do it in a memorable way? Uh, hey, I told you what I told them. If you're going to move, you're going to do something, do it with your soul and your heart. Do it right, man. Don't half step on it. Did they do it right? I don't know. That's up to them. They live with that. They're responsible for their actions. I'm responsible for my actions. The killers arrived at the home just after midnight, cutting the phone lines before climbing the gate to enter the premises. However, a friend of the owner's, Stephen Parent, showed up, leading to Watson pulling out a gun on him. Parent begged to be spared, promising to not say anything. Regardless, Watson attacked him with a knife, cut his hand, and then shot him in the chest four times to kill him. They managed to cut through a window before climbing into the property. However, this awoke Frakowski, who was asleep on the couch. Startled, he asked who they were and what they wanted. Watson replied, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. You were not a shocked man when they came back. All right, I'll put it to you this way. Would you do me a favor when you leave? Talk to this lieutenant and ask him if he's shocked by what goes on in here every day. I see blood in here every day. Every day someone's getting shot, someone's getting cut, someone's getting beat. I've lived in that all my life, woman. That don't wrinkle up my forehead. You can pile out the hundred dead bodies up in front of my cell and it don't set me to do nothing. The other people in the house were found and brought into the same room with their necks tied with rope. Sebring argued about the treatment of Tate, who was heavily pregnant, so Watson shot him before stabbing him repeatedly. Folger offered the murderers $70, but this didn't persuade them to stop. Frakowski was tied up with a towel, although he did manage to get free, but Atkins then stabbed him in the legs with a knife. He tried to escape until Watson beat him with a gun several times before stabbing him and then shooting him twice. Kasabian was left outside to stand guard and alert them if anybody was approaching. 
and at this point she believed she heard someone and quickly informed them. Inside, Folger did manage to escape out of a window, though Krenwinkel found her and stabbed her repeatedly before Watson finished her off. She was stabbed a total of 28 times. Krakowski also tried to escape, but more stabbing ensued before he too was murdered being stabbed 51 times and being hit in the head with the gun 13 times. To the point it actually bent the barrel and broke off an entire side of the grip of the gun. When you think about that woman and her eight and a half month old baby. Oh my goodness, here we go. Let's, let's bleed hearts, let's bleed. Why don't we just cut ourselves and just die because we feel so bad. We don't feel bad. What about them other people? What about them poor people starving to death over in the Appalachians? Do you think about that? What about the boat people that, uh, and all the other people that died over there? Well, what about that little girl in, in, that ran through my ling and all them people you shot and killed over there? Did you feel bad about that? Did you feel bad about the Second World War when you piled bodies up to the sky? Come on, man. Don't even put all that feel bad on me. You're the one that's feeling bad about it. Sharon Tate begged to be spared and even offered herself as a hostage. She wanted to be allowed to live just long enough to give birth offering herself afterwards to save her baby's life. But they didn't like this idea. Atkins and Watson stabbed her 16 times to kill her. The body of Sharon Tate is make-believe. Uh, that's make-believe make, that's make make to, believe, yeah. that's make believe to the people that went in there and did what they did. Mm -hmm. And who were those people? You those, know who, you the, know, yeah. you, but you know who they were. Sure I know who they, they were. They were with you at the Spawn Ranch. They were part yeah. of this thing called if not the Manson family or the Manson cult, the, the Manson Ranch. Call it what so you will. So then, what? I don't get involved. I don't run and tell them cops to protect me. I protect myself. And whatever happens, happens, man. People getting killed around me is no new thing. You come to prison, man, there's people getting killed in prison all the time. Manson had instructed them to leave a sign at the scene, something witchy. So the word pig was written on the front door in Sharon Tate's blood. I said, if you're going to do something, leave something witchy. Just like I would tell you, if you're going to do something, do it well. And leave something witchy. Leave a sign to let the world know that you were there. Have a good day. Early the next morning, the housekeeper, Winifred Chapman, arrived for work to discover the gruesome scene. The police were informed of the similarities between the Hinman murder and the Tate attack, with the similar calling card of the writing in blood. But the police believed it was a coincidence, and this one was just due to a drug transaction, ignoring all of the similarities. Stephen Parent was killed after he had visited William Garretson, who actually lived in the guest house on the property. So he was even held as a possible suspect at one point but he claimed he didn't see or hear any of the attack that night. He underwent a polygraph test and it came back to conclude that he was telling the truth. It's worth noting, however, that these tests are only 97% effective and aren't admissible in a court of law. But despite this, due to the test results, he was released on August the 11th, 1969. However, decades later, he admitted that the test failed. He confessed to witnessing a bunch of the murders taking place, and William Garretson would pass away in August of 2016. This man was not guilty of murdering my daughter, okay? Of all the seven murders that I know of, he did not commit one of them, all right? I feel that he has taken the blame for all of them. And the ones that should be blamed for is tax watch. What do you think of Sharon Tate's mom attending all of your parole hearings? Well, Sharon Tate's mom has never attended my parole hearings, and she knows I didn't have anything to do with killing her. her, her. Is that right? That's not right, is it, Paul? It's not what she goes to Tex. Who's the one? Tex that? took responsibility for that, man. Did you read his book? He said he did that. He said he did it because he thought that's what I wanted him to do. And I hope in no way that I've, that I've in any way I've given the impression that I'm trying to blame anything on my parents or blame anything on drugs or blame anything on rock music or blame anything on Manson because I do take complete responsibility. 
Just the next day after the murders, Charles Manson wasn't happy with the fight the victims put up and wanted to show his team how to do it properly. He drove the killers around considering the next targets before finding the home of supermarket executive Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. In the car on the way to the LaBianca house, you said this time, make sure they're not scared like last night. Oh no, it may have been something like this. I remember something like that, but I don't remember exactly the right words. I don't remember exactly the right words, but that's, that's, a, simple, that's a simple philosophy from China. That's a Chinese philosophy. If uh, if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna uh, uh, go to war and you're fighting your enemy and you kill him when he's afraid, you know it's a bad omen. It's bad. It's bad. So you try to absorb the fear. With uh, I think the Hindus use that word karma to bounce the karma. Manson left to go up the driveway with Watson, entering the house through an unlocked back door. They then tied up the hands of Lino Lebianca, who was asleep on the couch. Rosemary was then brought in and both of their heads were covered with pillowcases. Manson then left the property and sent in Krenwinkel and Van Houten, ordering for the couple to be murdered. That you went inside that house mm -hmm. and you tied them up mm -hmm. and assured them that they were not going to be hurt. Mm -hmm. That you went back outside and mm -hmm. sent Kasabian and Krenwinkel and Watson and Atkins inside the house to kill him. Mm -hmm. True? or false. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Chair's getting hot, huh? Did you do that? Did I kill anyone? No. Did you go in and tie up the LaBiancas that night? Very simple question. That night. August 10th, 1969. That night. August the 10th, Did you? 1969. Why duck it? Why dodge it? Why not answer it yes or no once and for all? Put it behind you. Did I kill anyone? Did you tie up the LaBiancas? Atkins testified you did. That's what Susie said? That's what she said. Yeah. And you remember, you were in the courtroom when she said it. <laughs> She's written three books and each time she said something different. Mm -hmm. Each time. Did you tie him up? Did I? Mm -hmm. Well, we came down from Abilene. And, uh, Let's stay in Los Angeles, August 10, 1969. There was a hole in the wall gang there. Why don't you want to talk about it, Charles? Why don't you because want to? Because I'm an outlaw, and I go so far, and then that's all you know. And if you did... That's like asking Jesse James. And if, and it, and, and if, and, and, and if as others have written, mm -hmm. and as others have testified, yeah. and as the media has reported, you did that. Yeah. And you sent your friends back in to do the deed. Aren't you a oh, coward? My huh? friends back in to do the terrible deed. Right. Doesn't that a make wicked you... deed. Turn on. Did we have the castle there with the vampires and the uh, Frankenstein and the uh, bugs and lizards dying in the deserts? Did we have the water that's dying and the whales are being killed and the seals are Here dying? we go again. Yeah. Lay it off on somebody else. Well, Let's point to all the other oh, injustices. I'm, I'm in the world all by myself? Yeah, yeah. On this one you are. Yeah. I didn't tie anybody up. Okay. I was never on the scene where anyone was killed. I think the law says you can only keep me 17 years or 18 years if I was never on the scene where anyone was killed. I was never on the crime scene of anything. Watson had previously complained about the weapons used in the previous night's murders, so they scouted the location for better suited ones. Watson began stabbing Lino with a chrome-plated bayonet, cutting into his throat. In the bedroom, Rosemary was swinging a lamp that had been tied to her neck to keep the women away from her. Watson did manage to stab her several times before returning to stab Lino 12 more. He even carved the word war into his abdomen. 
In the bedroom, Krenwinkel stabbed Rosemary repeatedly, but Manson had wanted everyone to take part, so Van Houten was forced to then join in, stabbing her 16 times in the back and buttocks. Van Houten later claimed that she was already dead by the time she began stabbing, and this was confirmed with the post-mortem. Watson then casually cleaned up the murder weapon and even took a shower, while the words rise and death to pigs were written on the wall, as well as helter skelter on the fridge door, all in LaBianca's blood. Did you tell them which words? No. Pig? No. Helter skelter? No. Arise? No. It's not my vocabulary. It's not my generation. I keep telling you that. You write in that in all your conversations with Charles Manson, he never expressed remorse. Have you seen any today? I mean, he perhaps he believes totally in his own mind that See, he's not you guilty. You guys got this stuck in your head that I've murdered somebody. You've got it stuck in your brain that I murdered somebody. What do you want to call me a murderer for? I've never killed anyone. I don't need to kill anyone. I think it. I have it here. In my whole life, I've burglarized a grocery store, stole some nickels and dimes, busted open a stamp machine, stole a few automobiles, and cashed a couple checks. I'm a petty car thief. I've uh, been with prostitutes and bums and winos and all my life. Uh, the street is my world. I don't, uh, I don't pretend to go uptown and be anything fancy. I can but I find more real in the world that I'm in than I do the tinsel. And the real world is the one I have to deal with every day, you know. Uh, believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. During all of this, Manson was driving the other three cult members to another location and then left, leaving them all to hitchhike home. He hoped for the other members to murder an actor at the location, but Kasabian deliberately knocked on the wrong apartment door and the plan was aborted. The murder scene wasn't discovered until 10.30 p.m when Rosemary's 15-year-old son, Frank Struthers, arrived back from a camping trip to discover the massacre. The police initially ruled out that the two murder scenes were connected. Meanwhile, on August the 16th, Spahn Ranch was raided and Manson and 25 others were arrested on suspicion of being involved in stealing multiple vehicles. Their weapons were then taken away, but the warrant was misdated, so the group were released just days later. Around 10 days after the raid, Manson believed that stuntman Donald Shea was responsible. He felt like he was trying to run the family off of the ranch. It's also believed that since Shea was married to a black woman, Manson felt like he was being sinful. It's also a possibility that Shea knew about the killings, and it was around this time he was murdered on the ranch. If you got out of here, there are a lot of people who think you'd go start killing people. Again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you guys are misinformed. I haven't killed anyone. I didn't break the law. The judge knew that. But the people didn't want to hear it. The judge knew it. He washed his hands. He said, I know it, but what can I do? People want this. The judge never said that. Yeah. Judge never That's said what Otis said. No, the judge didn't say that. He got off and shook the hands, didn't he? You were so white and pure. The judge didn't say you were innocent. Are you innocent? Innocent of what? Oh, that's what I'm saying. None of us are innocent. Yeah, just because you're convicted in a courtroom doesn't mean you're guilty of something. What does mean you're guilty? Well, you know you're guilty. What about Shea? What about him? Well, what about him? He got killed. Well, the word is you killed him. Word is that you're an old woman. Word is you have turkey in the sky. Word is, I don't know what word is. Somebody else tell you that. I didn't tell you Did that. Did you kill Shea? Hell no. Did you cut the Hinman's ear off? Hell yes. Family members Bruce Davis and Steve Grogan were later found responsible. In the middle of October, investigations continued to search for possible similar crimes, which is when the Hinman attack was checked further. Beausoleil's girlfriend, Kitty Lutzinger, had been arrested just a few days earlier with other members of the group, and she had been previously questioned. Not only had their ranch been raided, but it was also discovered that the Manson family had been searching Death Valley for a hole in the ground. The reason for this was a mystery. 
Furthermore, the group had previously burned an earth mover and accidentally left some clues behind. Some stolen dune buggies were found and a bunch of the group were arrested, including Charles Manson. He was found hiding in a bathroom cabinet on the ranch, but the officers had no idea they had just arrested those responsible for the murders. It's clear that you were guilty of murder, and yet he says in all his conversations with you, he never heard you express remorse. Have you never felt it? Remorse for what? You people have done everything in the world to me. Doesn't that give me equal right? I can do anything I want to you people at any time I want to, because that's what you've done to me. If you spit in my face and smack me in the mouth and throw me in solitary confinement for nothing, what do you think's gonna happen when I get out of here? I wouldn't do anything that I felt guilty about. You don't feel guilty at all? There's no need to feel guilty. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. Maybe I haven't done enough. I might be ashamed of that for not doing enough, for not giving enough, for not being more perceptive, for not being aware enough, for not understanding, for uh, being stupid. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people, then I would have felt better. Then when I felt like I really offered society something. Detectives even managed to contact a local motorcycle gang who Manson had previously attempted to hire as bodyguards on the ranch. And they did provide some information to link Manson to the killings. But a friend of Susan Atkins confirmed their involvement. She had previously confessed to her bunkmates whilst in an institute months earlier. We killed Sharon Tate because we wanted to do a crime that would shock the world, that the world would have to stand up and take notice. You dealt the hand down in LA. You and that press, you dealt the hand. You put me on Life magazine, had me convicted before I walked in the courtroom. You had what people wanted to buy. When they wanted to buy it, they didn't give a damn if they had to convict the district attorney. They had to convict the whole building to get that dollar bill going. Now, they had big bucks going there. He made 27 million, thousand, hundred billion. I'm bumming 10, 15 dollars for my friend here. On December the 1st, 1969, Watson, Krenwinkle and Kasabian were arrested after fingerprints were discovered at the scene and on the murder weapons, finally connecting the two attacks. Manson was also charged for the murders due to his connection with the group. Watson had actually left the state, hoping that enough time had passed for him to not be charged with the others, to no avail. He even tried to plead insanity, but this was soon discarded. The trial began on June the 15th, 1970, with Kasabian, Manson, Atkins and Krenwinkel being charged with seven counts of murder and one of conspiracy. However, Kasabian had not actually killed anyone, so she was granted immunity in return for testifying the events that night. Atkins was also offered to spare her the death penalty in exchange for her doing the same thing. But once she detailed what happened, this deal was revoked. Manson was initially offered the opportunity to act as his own attorney, but this was withdrawn as he quickly proved he was unable to do so. On July the 24th, 1970, Manson showed up to court with an X carved into his own forehead. He claimed that since he was considered inadequate and incompetent to speak or defend himself, he had X'd himself from the establishment's world. The rest of his team would then make the same marking on their own foreheads in the days that followed. Kasabian even revealed that Manson wanted to discard Rosemary LaBianca's wallet on the street of a black neighborhood to make it look like a gang had performed the attack, hoping that black people would steal the wallet and use the credit cards. However, Kasabian had hidden it in a woman's restroom in a gas station near a black area instead, though it was never found. On October the 5th, 1970, Manson even attempted to murder Judge Older while the jury were in the room. First, he threatened him before jumping over his table with a sharpened pencil. He was, however, restrained before he could act further. While he was being dragged out of the room, Manson yelled, In the name of Christian justice, someone should cut your head off. This led to Judge Older carrying a gun to every trial afterwards for defense. But I love the world I live in too, just like Regan loves the world he lives in. You love the world you live in. 
<laughs> Most assuredly, it's me. You love all the pain that you've caused people, all oh. the anguish you've oh, caused people. Oh, I don't know pain. I don't know pain. I have no depth of pain. I have no depth of suffering. I don't know ridicule. I don't know all the bad things. I haven't been punished by you all my life since I was 10 years old. I've been in every reform school you got across the country and used to lay down and have to get my ass whipped till I couldn't walk. Tell me about some pain. And that's yeah. our fault. That's all no, those people No want fault. You. Make strong, good pain. Understand pain. Not bad. Pain's not bad. It's good. It teaches you things. The trial ran for months with the family members threatening anyone who tried to testify against them. But strangely, they wanted to testify themselves. They did this and insisted that Manson had absolutely nothing to do with the murders. And the next day, Manson himself finally got to speak. These children that come at you with knives, they are your children. You taught them. I didn't teach them. I just tried to help them stand up. Most of the people at the ranch that you call the family were just people that you did not want. I know this, that in your hearts and souls you are as much responsible for the Vietnam War as I am for killing these people. I can't judge any of you. I have no malice against you and no ribbons for you. But I think that it is high time that you all start looking at yourselves and judging the lie you live in. My father is the jailhouse. My father is your system. I am only what you made me. I am only a reflection of you. You want to kill me? Ha! I am already dead. Have been all my life. I've spent 23 years in tombs that you have built. How long have I been in jail? 34 years? 34 years, so... Uh, Out of 47, you've been here 34. I've been in jail. Uh, prison. Uh, a long time. All my life. I was raised up in here. So I understand jail. So I understand myself and I can deal with that. On November the 30th, 1970, Leslie Van Houten's attorney, Ronald Hughes, failed to show up in court. He was found dead in a state park, badly decomposed, but it was impossible to determine the cause of death. It's believed that he was murdered by the Manson family as he had disagreed with Charles throughout the trial and refused to believe that he had no involvement in the deaths. Some believe it was just a coincidence and he may have drowned as he was found wedged between two boulders. Though Sandra Good, who is a member of the Manson family, admitted that this was the first of the retaliation killings. The three female family members maintained that Manson wasn't involved. They claimed that they performed their own crimes to get Bobby Beausoleil out of jail. They then claimed that the murders were simply copycat crimes to mimic the Hinman attack under the request of Kasabian. But throughout, none of them showed any remorse. And this was later discovered to have been Manson's plan all along. He insisted on all family members denying his involvement and taking full responsibility themselves to try and spare him the death penalty. But finally, on January the 25th, 1971, the group were found guilty of murder. Manson ended up trimming his beard to a fork shape and shaved his head, claiming, I am the devil, and the devil always has a bald head. The women didn't immediately follow suit as they had done so in the past, but on March the 29th, they were all sentenced to death. Upon this news, the remaining family members shaved their heads. Atkins even shouted upon hearing their fate, Better lock your doors and watch your kids. This was the longest murder trial in American history at the time, lasting nine and a half months and it was one of the most publicized American criminal cases in history. The transcript alone for the trial is nearly 32,000 pages long. Charles Manson's mother was actually tracked down and she claimed that during childhood, her son never suffered any neglect and was always pampered by all the women around him. On April the 22nd, 1971, Manson was sent to Los Angeles County Prison, but the death penalty was ruled unconstitutional the next year, so he was re-sentenced to life with the possibility of parole, though this changed years later and he was simply sentenced to life in prison. Was I happy when what was done? When you found out that you weren't going to the gas chamber. You are talking about dying? Now it gets me nervous. Why? Did you have any thoughts about something? Was you wanting to go anywhere? 
Were you happy when you found out you weren't going to go to the gas chamber, Charles? Uh, I knew I wasn't going to go to the gas chamber because I hadn't done anything wrong. You scared to die? Sometimes I feel I'm scared to live. Living is what scares me. Dying is easy. On December the 13th, Manson was then charged with the murder of Gary Hinman and Donald Shea. Though under California law, Manson was eligible to apply for parole after seven years imprisonment. He did this on November the 16th, 1978, but was rejected. On November the 8th, 1972, 26-year-old Vietnam veteran James L.T. Willett was found dead near Guerneville, California. Months earlier, he was forced to dig his own grave before being shot and then buried, but rather poorly. One of his hands was still uncovered, though his other hand and head were missing, most likely due to savage animals. His car was found outside a house where Manson followers lived, including Priscilla Cooper, Lynette Squeaky Frum, and Nancy Pittman. They were all arrested. James Willett's 19-year-old wife was found buried in the basement. She had been shot in the head very recently, though they claimed it was an accident. On September the 5th, 1975, Frum attempted to murder US President Gerald Ford in Sacramento, California, along with Sandra Good. They were found with the plans of assassination, and Frum actually approached the president, pulled out a gun in public, and fired. But the gun failed to go off. She, as well as Sandra Good, were both sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. It was believed that Manson wasn't insane and merely acted this way out of pure frustration. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people on the outside that think about the possibility of you coming out of here, and they're genuinely scared of you. Oh, boy, I might just, just make dust, everything terrible. One little guy, terrible. Ooh, boy, how insecure are we as human beings? Put all our fear on one little guy. Afraid to let him out. <laughs> he might break all the toys. <laughs> Why do you say little guy? <laughs> because I'm not the guy you're trying to make out of me. That's not me. I don't know what my way is. Everybody keeps telling me I got all these things. I read the other day where I had magical powers, and I told everybody in the chapel, I said, zap, 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 zap. I said, where's my magical powers? Uh, well, you can't read You can't believe what you read in the press. I can get no magical powers, mystical trips and all that kind of crap. <laughs> On September the 25th, 1984, inmate Jan Holmstrom poured paint thinner on Charles Manson and actually set him on fire. This burned around 20% of his body, but he survived. Holmstrom claimed it was because Manson had previously threatened him in the past. In 1985, Stephen Grogan was released on parole after revealing the location of Donald Shea's body on the ranch. And in 1987, Lynette Squeaky Fromm did actually escape briefly from federal prison camp in Alderson, West Virginia. She claimed that she had heard Charles Manson had testicular cancer and tried to reach him, but she was soon caught and taken back to prison. Are you a changed man? They say they're changed women. Changed. I, I, I was a changed man when I got out last time. I learned. I learned. I learned my lesson well. What's the lesson you've learned from all this? I don't exist in your world. I'm only what is. What it is. It is what it is. Manson's firstborn child, Charles Manson Jr., had since legally changed his name to Jay White in order to separate himself from his father. However, it all became too much for him to handle and he would commit suicide on June the 29th, 1993 at 10.15am at the age of just 35 with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Though he did have a child of his own, Jason Freeman. Over the years, Freeman always struggled, much like his suicide-driven father. He didn't truly understand the severity of his ancestry until the 8th grade in history class, when his teacher was discussing his grandfather, Charles Manson, and the entire class began to stare at him. 
Freeman wasn't allowed to talk about his granddad to his friends, nor was he allowed to discuss it with his grandmother, Rosalie. It was always a giant skeleton in his closet. In 1989, Manson was moved to the protective housing unit, and in 1997, he was found trafficking drugs. On March the 27th that same year, he had another parole hearing, but was denied. Due to this, Manson never again attended any other hearing. The panel claimed he had controlling behavior, mental health issues, schizophrenia, paranoid delusional disorder, and was far too dangerous to ever be released to the public. He had received 108 rules violation reports, never showed any signs of remorse, no indication that he understood the results of his crimes, and had a complete disregard for human suffering. When you say you're playing for your life, am I to yeah. assume that you think that someday you're going to get out of here? <laughs> get out of here. Hmm. Get out of here. Where would I go? Let's see. What would you do if you got out of here? I got out of here. What if they said they said to you tomorrow morning, Charles, hey, listen, you're free. You can go wherever you want to go. Do whatever you want to do. What would you do? I'd probably go out in front on the grass and sit down. In March 2009, Charles now had a receding hairline, a grizzled grey beard and hair, and still had the swastika on his forehead. But strangely, Los Angeles disc jockey Matthew Roberts came out to claim that he may be the biological son of Charles Manson. It is worth noting that there bears a strong physical resemblance between Matthew Roberts and Charles Manson. His mother claimed that she was a member of the Manson family, but that she was raped by Charles and left in the middle of 1967. She then fell pregnant and gave birth on March the 22nd the next year, though she put Roberts up for adoption. Manson did go on record in the past by saying that he had absolutely no idea how many children he may have fathered in his entire lifetime. How do you feel about spending the rest of your life in prison? Well, we're all our own prisons. We each are our own wardens and we do our own times. We used to get stuck in our own little trips and we kind of judge ourselves the way we do. You know, uh, I can't judge uh, nobody else. The best thing I could do is try to judge myself and live with that. On August the 14th, 2009, Lynette Squeaky Fromm was released on parole after 34 years after attempting to shoot President Gerald Ford. On September the 24th the next month, Manson family member Susan Atkins passed away in prison from brain cancer. In 2010, Charles Manson was caught with a mobile phone contacting people across the United States, though it's unclear what exactly he was using it for. On April the 11th, 2012, Manson was denied parole for the 12th time. It was decided that he wouldn't be considered again for another 15 years, which would be 2027, when he would be 93 years old. If you got out tomorrow, do you have any scores to settle on the outside? Scores? No, do not have any scores out there. And we're making believe, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, buddy. <laughs> Well, I don't rightly know. I'm stupid <laughs> to the point to where I'm not really sure. In 2014, 80-year-old Charles Manson was now engaged to 26-year-old Afton Elaine Burton, and he even managed to get a hold of a valid marriage license. She had been visiting him in prison for nine years and always professed his innocence online. However, the wedding license expired on February the 15th, 2015, and they never actually got married. It's believed that the wedding didn't take place because Manson found out that she only wanted to marry him so that she and a friend could use his corpse as a tourist attraction after his death. Although, allegedly, Manson believed that he would never die, and he even considered going through with the wedding to ensure that Burton and her friend would continue visiting him and bringing him gifts. Though she claimed that the wedding didn't take place because he fell ill and wasn't allowed visitors. Though she still had hopes that they would marry one day. 
On April the 14th, 2016, Leslie Van Houten was considered for parole, but this was denied in July. On September the 6th, she was granted it, but it had to go through a 120-day legal review first. On January the 19th, 2018, she was denied. And on June the 3rd the next year, she was denied again, which would follow suit for a third time on November the 27th, 2020. She remains in prison to this day. On October the 27th, 2016, Charles Watson was denied parole for the 17th time, though he would be considered in five years' time. He remains in prison. In December 2016, Patricia Krenwinkel was considered for parole, but this was delayed as she revealed abuse claims by Manson, which required further investigation. On June the 22nd, 2017, she was denied parole for the 14th time, though this would be reconsidered in five years. She remains in prison. On January the 1st, 2017, Charles Manson began to suffer from gastrointestinal bleeding, being rushed to Mercy Hospital in Bakersfield, California, though he was considered far too weak to be operated on. He was returned back to prison on January the 6th. On November the 15th, later that same year, he was returned to hospital once again, but would pass away from cardiac arrest after respiratory failure and colon cancer on November the 19th at the age of 83. After his death, things got even more complicated. Manson's grandson, Jason Freeman, wanted possession of Manson's remains. Charles also had a pen pal called Michael Channels who claimed to have a will from Manson from 2002, leaving his remains and his entire estate to him. Though Manson's friend Ben Gorecki claimed to have had a 2017 will, giving the estate and remains to Matthew Roberts, who still claimed to be Manson's son. However, a DNA test was administered to see if Matthew Roberts, an alleged son of Manson, was actually related to Jason Freeman, the confirmed grandson of Manson, and there was no match. Freeman was granted the remains and he had Manson cremated on March the 20th, 2018. On February the 7th, 2020, Channels and Freeman still had disputes over who was the rightful heir of Manson's estate, and nothing more has been said since. On February the 1st, 2017, Bruce Davis was considered for parole, but this was denied. On June the 22nd, 2019, he was actually granted parole by the board, but they require the governor's final decision, and he remains in prison. On January the 3rd, 2019, Bobby Beausoleil was considered for his 19th chance of parole, though it was denied on April the 26th, and he remains in prison. The cause of such psychotic behavior can only be speculated, though it seems evident in his early years. But to this day, there are still many people who also still believe that Charles Manson wasn't responsible for these murders and had very little to do with them. But the extent of his madness and the list of his crimes and his involvement all remains a mystery. Charles Manson is a name that still raises questions and we shall forever be seeking answers.